of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Before we bring you today's story of the Texas Rangers, let's talk a moment with Phil Harris and Alice Fay during a break in the rehearsal for today's Phil Harris, Alice Fay show. Thank you, Bill Foreman. You know, folks, I welcome this opportunity to talk with you about the great lineup of stellar entertainment in store for you this evening right here on NBC. Right after Tales of the Texas Rangers, Tallulah Bankhead will bring you all of her darling guest stars on the big show. And I know that she has some of your favorite entertainers with her today, and I hope you'll listen to the big show. And then right after Tallulah and her guests, it's time for my show, the show... Our show. You could be right. Our show, the uh, Phil Harris, Alice Faye show with Frankie Remley, Brother William, Julius Abruzio, and little Alice and Phyllis. And don't forget the theater guild on the air, Phil. That's right. Immediately following our show, you'll hear your favorite stars of Hollywood and Broadway in great plays on Theater Guild on the air. So we hope you'll stay tuned right here to NBC. Thank you, Phil Harris and Alice Faye. And now, here's today's adventure of the Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Prelude to Felony. It is 8.30 Wednesday morning in Ismata, Texas, July 7th, 1951, as Sheriff Alan Hankins answers a phone call in his office. Hankins speaking. Sheriff, this is Buck Watley. Oh, morning, Buck. What can I do for you? First off, you can help me locate four calves that were stole off my place last night. You sure they couldn't have strayed somewhere? Sure, I'm sure. I had eight of them in the field out yonder, and this morning four of them's gone. No fence is broken. No way they could have got out. Somebody took them, that's all. Uh, how long have they been missing, Buck? I told you, just since last night. The kids were riding across the field on their way to school just now. I heard the old cows bawling and carrying on. My kid Reno's pretty smart. Yeah. She turned back and seen some of the calves were missing. Well, did you take a look yourself? I sure did. I only got about 14 head in my whole place, Sheriff. And I'm telling you, I ain't mistaken. The calves are gone, and you've got to help me find out who took them. I'll come right on out, Buck, and see what we got to go on. Sheriff went out immediately to Buck Watley's ranch. Upon investigation, he could find no clue to the whereabouts of the missing calves. And by 10.30 a.m., he had called for the aid of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned and approximately 11.45 arrived at the Watley ranch. Hello, Sheriff. Well, howdy, Jace. Mighty glad to have you give us a hand. Uh, This is Buck Watley. Morning, Ranger. Morning, is this the gentleman who thinks he had some cattle stolen? Think? I know. I had eight calves out in that field there, and four of them's just disappeared into thin air. I just came back from checking the fences, and there's no way they could have strayed, Jace. What is it, Reno? We're busy. You kids beat it now. Whoa, whoa. Hey, Dad. Go on, Reno. Don't bother me now. I'm talking to the ranger. But listen, Dad. Now, this is my daughter. The kids are sort of excited this morning, because they're the ones who discovered the calves missing. I'm trying to tell you, Dad. We found them. The calves? Yeah. Whereabouts? Over at Smith's place. Are oh, that dirty crook. Right in his south field, aren't they, Dink? Yeah, that's right, honest. Oh, sure shows you never can trust anybody. Are you sure they're your dad's calves? I'm dead sure they are. You see, we took a shortcut over by his place on our way to school, and, and we just happened to see them, four of them. And I know they're my dad's. Come on, I'll show you. Now, wait a minute. You've been running that pony too hard. Now, take it easy, kids. Let those horses rest a minute. They're pretty winded. Well, I had to get back and tell my dad about Schmidt having the calves. You going to arrest him? Yeah, we have to be sure he stole them first, don't well, we? I just told you. We found them right over there in Schmidt's field. 
What do you know about this Schmidt sheriff? Oh, I've known him for a long time, Jace. Lives there with his little daughter. Always seemed like an honest, hard-working old fella to me. I tell you, Ranger, he stole our camps. Well, we'll look into it, Reno. Say, how come you kids aren't in school now? Well, the Ranger's right, Reno. You kids make track for school. Go on, beat it. Oh, but we want to see you arrested. You do like I said, Reno, or I'll tan you good. Oh, gee, Dad, couldn't we just wait until he's arrested? Maybe you better do what your dad says, Reno. We can take care of things all right. Get going, Reno. Oh, all right. Come on, gang. Get up there, sir. You shouldn't let the kid run the horse that way, Mr. Watley. And she'll ruin his mouth yanking at it like that. You're right, but it ain't easy to tell Reno what to do. Especially when her mother's away. Effie's up visiting her sister this week, and I got my hands full, I can tell you. Look at those kids ride, Jace. Yeah, they shouldn't have a horse if they don't know how to take care of them. Well, we might as well go on over and have a talk with Schmidt, I guess. You want to come with us, Mr. Watley? Well, if they are your calves, you'll have to identify them. All right. We can all go in my car. Where do I head when I get out of the ranch here, Sheriff? Well, see over yonder across the field where the kids are riding? Yeah. Well, it's straight over that way. But we got to go around. And I'll be mighty surprised, Watley, if Gus Schmidt ever did any stealing of any kind. Well, I guess we'll soon find out. Well, this is the place. Well, aren't you coming with us, Mr. Watley? You mind if I wait in the car? I'd rather you talk to him first. Suit yourself. Well, there he is, coming around the house now. Uh, hey, Schmidt! Yeah? So, Sheriff Hankins. I didn't see you drive in. I, I was out in the back making some sausage. Gus, this is Ranger Pearson. Oh, yeah? wonder if you could answer a few questions for us. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah, of course. Gus, four calves were found missing from Buck Watley's ranch during the night. Four calves? And Watley's daughter, Reno, said she saw them on your place this morning. How about that? She's fantastic. You don't know anything about them, then? Me? Oh, of course I don't. Tell me, Mr. Schmidt, have you got any cattle on your place here? Yeah, just a few. How many? Let me see. We have six altogether, I think. Up if we have them only for milking and making butter, you know. No calves, eh? Well, yeah, we got two. Where do you keep them? Just down there in the field. Yeah, see? You don't mind if we have a look at them, do you? No, of course not. Come, I show you. You coming with us, Buck? You better come along, Mr. Wadley. Okay. Morning, Mr. Watley. Morning, Smith. Well, no, I hear you have some calves missing. Yeah, four of them. Oh, you think they strayed away? I know they didn't. Oh, look, Mr. Watley, we have been good neighbors, yeah? Surely you don't think I took these calves from you. Well, seems believing where I come from, Schmidt. Oh, look, Mr. Watley, if you want to look on my place, why don't you come and, and say so? Instead, you bring a sheriff and a ranger, too. Like I'm a thief, yeah? Well, my kid we know said she's seen him here. Ah, this Reno. She tells so many lies as there are fleas in Egypt. Now, look, Schmidt. I don't like your talking that way about my kid. Well, it's true. All right, just hold it, both of you. Let's have a look at your calves, Gus. Yeah, yeah, I show you. I have two, and they are mine. Come on, Wadley. Mm, my neighbors I have, yeah. If I find anybody's calves on my place, I bring them back myself. Yeah, there are those kids again. They haven't gone to school yet. Yeah, playing hooky. And they're not staying on my place, I tell you. Beat it, Reno. You heard me. Yeah, that's the threat. You tell her to go. Just scram. Get out, all of you. I'll give my own kid order, Schmidt. Well, she does not come on my place again. And now I tell you, Mr. Hartley, she is a devil, this Reno. She's a darn sight smarter than your kid, Schmidt. Ah, Narka is a good girl. And Reno, she has smart like a hyena, yeah? Hm. She puts cement in my well and gravel in the mesh. You keep that little devil off my land from now on, Mr. Watt. So you don't like the kids snooping around, eh, Schmidt? I tell you, I chase them off when they come here the next time. No wonder. No wonder what? So Reno's a liar, is she? Yeah, I say she is. How many calves did you say you had, Gus? I have two. You better count them, Schmidt. <laughs> One, two... Oh. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. You got six here altogether. Yeah, it's true. And four of them is mine. 
How about that, Mr. Schmidt? Well, Vaishnik, I, I don't know. Gus, I'm afraid you've got a little explaining to do. But what am I explain? I got two calves, and here are six. I don't know how they come to be on my place. Oh, yeah. Now, wait a minute, Wadley. Mr. Schmidt, four of these aren't your calves, then? No. And you haven't any idea how they got here? Nein. If they are yours, Mr. Wadley, take them away. I, I don't want anything that is not my own. Well, I guess we found what we were looking for, but... Yeah, we sure did. Ah, so... Mr. Wadley, I'm sorry they should be here on my place. But how? I don't know. Well, I really ought to have the sheriff run you in, Schmidt, but now that I've found them, I guess I'll just run them on home. Hey, Dad! Those kids are still hanging around. They don't mind very well, do they, Wadley? No. Don't I tell you, Mr. Wadley, the next time that daughter of yours she come on my place, I send for a sheriff myself and have her arrested. Oh, you will, huh? Yeah, saying that I am a thief. She should have her mouth washed out with brown soap. Now, look here, Schmidt. If anybody's going to be arrested, it's going to be you. Now I'm going to show you. I'm swearing out a complaint against Schmidt for cattle theft, Sheriff. Doc, go ahead. Swear then. It don't do you no good. Oh, now, wait a minute, Buck. No, no I was going to let him off, but now I ain't going to. Let's get on down to your office, Sheriff. Oh, my God. Yeah, come on, Gus. I guess we got to take you in. Ah, no. Let go of me. No, no, Nobody's no, no, arresting no. me for something I did not no, do. No, come, on, come on, come on, Schmidt. This... This kind of thing isn't going to do you any good. Let's ride down and talk things over, shall we? No, nobody's taking me in for a thief. Well, the calves were found here, Mr. Schmidt. And since Watley's preferring charges, I'm afraid you're under arrest. But I did not take those calves, I tell you. Maybe not. But you're coming with us anyway. <sighs> All right. I come, then. <laughs> In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Today, more than ever before, America needs all of us. It needs every ounce of manpower that it can muster to outproduce the world. And only through production can it gain strength, industrial strength, to remain a free and independent nation, strong enough to be beyond fear of aggression. Now, that means using all of our manpower, including thousands and thousands of handicapped persons, both veterans and non-veterans. So, if you are an employer, don't overlook this opportunity for added production through added manpower. Hire the handicapped. How do you go about it? Simple. Just get in touch with the nearest office of your state employment service. Now, if you are a handicapped man or woman and you want a job, you also should contact that same office of your state employment service. Remember, to remain strong, America needs all of us on the job. Hire the handicapped and keep them on the job. And now, back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Prelude to Felony. I dropped the sheriff and Watley off at the ranch to pick up their cars, and then I drove Schmidt on down to the sheriff's office with me. After Watley filed charges against Schmidt, he went home to wait for an order to recover his calves. Meantime, the sheriff and I were having our troubles with Schmidt. But, Gus, you've already told us the calves we found on your place were not yours. Yeah, 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 it's true. But still, I did not steal them. Gus, listen, we're not asking you to say you did. All we want you to do is sign a statement that the calves don't belong to you. No, I'm not signing no statements that I'm a thief. Gus, look, my secretary here has been taking down everything you've said in your own words. Just let her type up a statement and then sign it and we'll let you go home. Yeah, yeah, well, how long will it take? Only about a half hour. No, I cannot do it. Nartle will be coming home from school now. Oh. And I have promised I will take her to a party at my sister-in-law's. Well, Gus, I'm afraid you can't go till we tell you to. But now, look, she will be frightened. It is getting late. I tell you what, Gus. I'd like to talk to Nalka about this anyway. So why don't I ride out and drive her over to the party while you sign those papers, huh? Would you do this? I'd be glad to. Ah, so Nalka will show you where Ali lives. And would you see that she has her little sweater? She she takes cold very easy, Nalka does. I sure will, Gus. Yeah, oh, and Mr. Ranger. Yes? Please, 
Could you say as little as possible to Nalke about this? While the sheriff was holding Schmidt at the office, I went out to his ranch to get the little girl. When I turned in the road, I saw the same gang of kids that had been hanging around earlier. They were gathered in a bunch by the ranch house porch. They saw me drive up. They mounted and took off in a hurry down the road. Nalka? Who is it? I'm Ranger Pearson. Say, what's the trouble? You're going to a party, aren't you? Your eyes will be all red. Nothing's worth crying that hard about. I don't want to go to the party now. What were those kids saying to you just now, anyhow? They said my father's a thief. Who said that? Reno and Dink, they all did. They said he's a thief and he's going to jail. Mind if I sit down on this step with you a minute? Did you come to arrest my father? No, I came to drive you over to the party. You did? Mm-hmm. Wait till Reno hears about that. Reno's just mean. She's not only mean to me, but she's mean to Satan. Well, if, if I had a nice little horse like that, I'd never... Nalka, listen. Your dad told me you're a pretty sensible kid. Did he? Where did you see my papa? In town. As a matter of fact, I just left him. Where is he? He's all right, Nalka, and he'll be home when you get back from your Aunt Allie's. Why isn't he here now? If you know anything about my papa, then you better tell me. Especially if it's true what Reno said. What did Reno say? She said Papa's a thief and he's going to jail. Nalka, do you know anything about four calves that were found in your field this morning? No. You sure? Yes. I mean, yes, I do. I I took them. When? Yesterday morning. I'm afraid your story isn't very good, Nalka. Calves disappeared last night. Oh, You know, telling stories never helped anybody very much. And besides, if your dad didn't take the kids... Well, he didn't. Well, then there's nothing to worry about. He's just down talking to the sheriff, and he'll be through in plenty of time to pick you up. Now, come on. You don't want to miss any of the party, do you? No. Oh, uh, by the way, I promised your dad I wouldn't let you forget your sweater. Where is it? It's on the fence. Well, why don't you run back and get it? All right. What's the matter, Nalka? I can find it. It isn't here. Are you sure you didn't leave it in school? No, it was right here. They took it. Now I know why Dink was acting so funny. Who's Dink? Oh, he's Reno's boyfriend. He was making fun of my sweater. I guess he stole it. That's what he did. Couldn't you arrest him? Well, no, unless I was really sure he took it on purpose. Well, he did. Where does Dink live? He lives over on the other side of the wash. Well, let's stop by that way, shall we? Yes. Come on, then. Let's go. Climb in. (laughs) Your dad tells me you walk to school every day, Nalka. Yes. Well, maybe that's what gives you those rosy cheeks. You ever thought of that? Oh, I don't mind walking so much. But I wish I had a horse. Any kind of a horse. Do the other kids tease you for walking? Uh Uh-huh. You'll have a horse someday, Nalka. I bet you. There he is. There's Dink. Hey, pull up there, son. Me? Yes, you. Yes, sir. You stay here, Nalka. I'll handle this. All right. You want me, Ranger? Yes, I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Did you take a red sweater from Schmidt's place just now? No, sir, I didn't. Are you sure? Yes, sir. And what's this piece of yarn doing in the catch of your saddlebag? Huh? Right here, this little piece of wool. Let's see what you've got in here. You can see there isn't any sweater in there, sir. Yes, I can. And that's why I want you to tell me where it is. I don't know, Ranger. You better tell me. I'm not fooling now. I'll give it to Reno. You can get in trouble for taking other people's belongings, son. Guess you know that. Yes, sir. What'd you want to take a little girl's sweater for, anyway? Well, uh, Reno said she wanted it for tonight. What's going on tonight? Go on, speak up. I, I, I can't tell you. Well, you better tell me. Come on, out with it. Well, Reno wants to plant it. Plant it? Well, you know, she, she wants to make it look as though Nalka did it this time. Did what? Well, 
Now hurry up. Well, we, we took some calves from Reno's dad. You mean you kids took those calves over to Schmidt's place? Yeah. What's the big idea of all this anyway, Dink? What do you kids want to stir up all this trouble for? I don't know, just for the heck of it. I didn't want to do it honest. Reno's the one that thought of it. She said that... Well, Reno's going to be talking out of the other side of her mouth when I get through with her. Now tell me, what is it you kids are up to tonight? Well, we was going over to Cafferty's... And steal some more calves, I suppose. Well, yeah. And leave this sweater so little Nalk could get blamed for it, huh? Well, gee, Ranger, I didn't want to do it honest. Reno's the one that thought it all up. Now listen, Dink, I want to tell you something. I've been a ranger for a long time, and I can tell you the jails are full of people that let somebody else talk them into doing something they knew wasn't right. Yes, sir. What time are you meeting? Nine. I don't want you to say anything about this to Reno or anyone else. Do you hear, Dink? Yes, sir. But, gee, I'm going to feel like a stool pigeon tonight. I'm leaving how you're going to feel tonight strictly up to your dad. Come on, Dink. Where do you live? Right over there in that white house. All right, get moving. I'll be along in a minute. Yes, sir. I told Dink's parents to go easy on him because I didn't think he'd be getting into any more trouble for a while. But I asked them to see that he didn't leave the house or use the telephone at all that evening. Then I took the little Schmidt girl over to her aunt's. By this time, I was pretty sure the best person I could get to help me was Reno Watley's father. So about 8.30, I went out to call on him at his ranch. Well, hi there, Ranger. Howdy. Come on in. I'm glad to see you. You know, I've been feeling pretty bad about turning old Schmidt in today. We've been neighbors for a long time. But I ain't going to let anyone talk about my kid like that. Oh, sit down. Can I fix you something? No, thanks, Mr. Wadley. Where is Reno tonight? Oh, she's going to that young people's party at the church. You know, they have square dancing and games. Try to give the kids a nice wholesome time. Good idea, don't you think? Yeah, it would be if the kids ever went. What do you mean? I mean, I don't think Reno's over there tonight, Mr. Wadley. You got a telephone at the church? Oh, sure. Well, then I think you better find out. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Crane? Uh, this is Buck Watley. Can I speak to Reno, please? Huh? Well, if she does come in, tell her to call her dad, pronto. Well, Mr. Watley... Look, Granger, would you mind telling me what this is all about? If you know where my kid is, I'd like to know. Is she in some kind of trouble? I'm afraid she is, and she's heading for more. That's why I came out to see you tonight, about a little matter of cattle theft. Cattle theft? It was your own kid stole those calves and drove them over to Schmidt's place. Huh? What are you talking about? Simply this. Reno and her friends thought they could put the bee on old Gus. But what in blazes would make Reno want to do a thing like that? Well, the whole gang of them out here seem to get some kind of excitement out of making mischief for people. I'm afraid Reno's at the root of it. Are you sure about this, Ranger? I'm pretty well convinced. And the worst of it is, tonight they're planning to steal some calves from Cafferty's and pin the blame on Nalka. Schmidt's little girl? But why? Well, seems they've got it in for her because she's shy and doesn't have a horse of her own like the rest of them. Do you mean those little whippersnappers that do that just because the kid don't have a horse to ride? Yeah, I guess without one, she couldn't be one of the gang. Reno's just a kid, but I never thought she was mean. And I just can't believe she'd take anything that didn't belong to her. Well, I heard you tell Schmidt this morning that Cian's believing. Yes. Well, then, I think you'd better come along with me tonight. What do you say? Yeah. I think maybe I'd better. <laughs> Wadley and I got to Cafferty's a little before nine and staked out behind an old shed not far from the corral. We'd warned Cafferty's to let the kids go through with it just to be sure we caught them without anybody getting hurt. We hadn't been there too long before we heard them coming. Hurry up, There they are. Yeah, that's Reno, all right. I don't know what's keeping him. I don't know, he's always Hey, Jan, you and Mike hold the horse, you see? All right, okay, we're And Loki, you come with me. I just hope I can keep the lid on my temper till you tell me it's time, Ranger. Hold it, Wadley. Let's really catch him in the act. We're going to open up that crowd gate any minute. Now. Okay, Loki. Open her up, let him out. All right, I'll get it. Hey, shh, shh. Wait, huh? wait. I thought I heard something. Okay, it's all right, I guess. Yeah, come on. Get up there. Shoot, shoot. Yeah, get up. Yeah, get up. 
Come on, let's move up a little closer. Okay, fall. She's going to plant now. I swear. I'm going to plant something on her backside before long. Okay, Loki. Let me just put this year on the fence. Yeah. Huh? And then we'll drive them <laughs> calves over to Schmidt. <laughs> hey, I'm leaving this year for Mr. Cafferty in place of his calves. Wait Soon enough, Mr. Wilkins. Plenty. Sure okay, come on. <laughs> All right, you can give that sweater to me, Reno. Seeing it isn't yours. Who's oh, there? Hey, it's a ring. The ring. Come on. Yeah, you kids right. stay right where you are, all of you. No, you don't, Reno. Get down off that horse. Leave me alone. Give me that quirt. Get let go of me. I said give it to me. Now get off that horse. I won't. You hear me? I said get off. I ought to use that quirt on you, Reno. Come here. Dad. Yeah, I ought to shake your teeth down your throat for stealing your own dad's calves. Oh, Dad. I'm planning to blame it on a little kid. You make tracks for the ranch just as fast as you can, Reno. Do you hear me? Okay. The rest of you kids go on home and stay there. You'll be here for me, Reno. I thought I told you to beat it home. And that's just the beginning. When I get through with you, I'm going to have a couple of calluses on my hands. Get moving, and don't stop moving till I tell you to. Oh, kids. Ranger, I don't know how I'm ever going to face old Schmidt again. We used to be pretty good neighbors, too, for this. Well... On account of his little girl, I'd get that complaint off the books as soon as you could. Oh, I'm going to. I'm doing it tonight. That won't undo all the harm's been done. Wish I could do something to make up for this. Yeah, they were pretty upset, both of them. Kids teasing that poor little girl and all. Ranger, I want you to do something. I want you to go down by the prettiest little paint you can find and charge it to me. Take it over to Nauka, will you? Okay, Mr. Wadley. Only don't let on that it come from me. Old Gus is kind of proud, and I don't know if he'd let her accept it. Well, I thought you wanted to make up for things, Wadley. I do, I do. Well, then go on over. Give it to her yourself. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Hello, friends. This is Jack Parr. I'll be with you later this evening with the $64 question, but right now I'd like to remind you about some of the other great shows this evening on the NBC radio network. In just a few minutes, you'll hear the big show with Tallulah Bankhead and a big array of guest stars. And, of course, Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct the big show orchestra and chorus. You will hear 90 minutes of scintillating comedy and music today on The Big Show. And then, right after the big show, stick around for the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show with Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, Brother William, and the entire Harris household. It's a program that's sure to please you. Later today, Theater Guild on the Air will bring you stars from Hollywood and Broadway in an exciting Broadway play. And right after Theater Guild on the Air, I'll be back with a pocket full of money and the $64 question. I'll be talking to a lot of contestants tonight, and maybe you will hear one of your neighbors. So why not stay tuned right now to the NBC for a whole evening of great entertainment. I'll be looking for you in our radio audience tonight. And now, let's get back to the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. By 11 that night, Buck Watley had withdrawn his charge against Gustav Schmidt. No further complaint was filed. But the juveniles involved admitted to various acts of vandalism and petty theft and were warned that further occurrences would bring about disciplinary action of the court. They were placed in the custody of their respective parents. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers... Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. Colleen Collins played the part of Reno Watley. Buck Watley was Ed Bigley. Marion Crucian played Nalke Schmidt. And Forrest Lewis was Gus Schmidt. Harley Bear played the role of Sheriff. Others in the cast were Tony Barrett and George Peroni. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Betty Mears. And the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. 
Next, enjoy comedy, drama, and music on The Big Show on NBC.